I hear some, I hear some good TV back there in the background. <laughs> All right. So, uh, am I muted? Or am I? No, there we go. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> there's your video, and uh, I wanted to sort of not walk you through the whole process, but just tell you that the, as I've done this more and more, and I have, I have that's I did that video uh, a little bit last night and then this morning, uh, including all the audio. Uh, as I do this uh, more and more, I start to realize that the audio is really the time consuming part. I spent about an hour and a half on your audio, and then I spent about 45 minutes on the video portion of that. You can see it's very, very simple. Uh, I didn't do anything with it, so it's not very creative, but it is at least uh, your, your faces and you're, you're able to see yourselves. Um, and then uh, the audio part of it, the reason it takes a little bit longer is because you do have to do some balancing. You want to adjust the EQ, throw on some reverb, that sort of thing. Uh, and then I did a little bit of shifting you around where our consonants weren't quite together, that sort of thing. Um, although not a ton. My favorite part of that video is, I don't know who it is, one of you tenors came in and uh, what's the what's the vowel? One of you clearly comes in on a mixed vowel. <laughs> yeah, and then you correct yourself after a second. <laughs> so uh, anyway, th that sort of stuff uh, would, would come out in rehearsal. And so uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about is, is um, sort of how that would be used in rehearsal. But before we do that, um, I want to mention that I sort of went over the process a little bit last week. And um, the, the more I do this, the more I realize that some of the things that people get a little bit hung up on in the process are not particularly important. So the portrait versus landscape, uh, you may have been able to see that we had some folks who had filmed in landscape and so they would occasionally like go off camera a little bit. I, I don't know how, how important that is to you, but for me as a director, this, this kind of a project is not going to be something where I'm gonna put everybody's faces on the screen the whole time. It's going to be pictures of us in rehearsal. It's going to be footage of our Zoom rehearsal. It's going to be pictures of our building. There's, I'm going to have a lot of different things on the screen if it's for a performance. And so I wouldn't get so hung up on that. Another example is the what kind of headphones you use, wired versus Bluetooth, um, those, those sorts of uh, file formats, those kinds of things. To me, what's most important is that it's easy for your singers and that um, if they're going to participate, they don't feel like there's a lot of barriers to entry. So um, the, the how of it, that's the only thing I was going to say today because it's come up a, a couple times this week. And then the next thing I wanted to do is allow you the chance to react. Uh, what was, those of you who participated, there are several of you whose faces I've been looking at for the last uh, two or three hours. Uh, how, how was the experience for you in terms of participating in the project? Because I, I definitely have my own feelings about, <laughs> about it, but how, how, was, how was the experience of having to sing and to do this, especially if you never had before? Let's see, I'm going to call on people. Susan, would you share with us? Sure. So I, uh, I went out and mowed the lawn and um, I came back in and I stunk. And I'm like, you know what, it's Ave Verum Corpus. And my husband was outside weeding in the back of the yard and it was quiet in the house. And I'm like, it's Ave Verum Corpus. I'll just sing it. I know that I just mowed the lawn and I'm going to have delayed onsets and it's going to sound sketchy. And I, I smell terrible, but nobody can smell me over video. And I did one take and just submitted it. Good. And and I know it was sketchy, but no, well, I mean, I, I wanted to kind of be empathetic to what a student is feeling, and and just like overcome those barriers and say, you know what, here I am as I am in the world as it is. Here you go. Great. Yeah, well, I, th I think that's great. And that's that for especially for my Tuesday night group, the tall community members, that's exactly what I encourage them to do is y'all just whenever you get a chance do a recording, send it in and let me worry about the the uh, feedback to, to them, the feedback to them and also the uh, the process of putting it together if that's what I'm doing, which is not always the case. Uh, let me see who the next person is on my screen who participated. Uh, Karen, would you share a little bit, Karen Lickin? Yeah. Um... I, I've done this a couple of times now, and I think that the hardest part is just getting things set up, you know, so that you're have your things in the right place and you're hearing the right thing. And 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 I and when I did this with my students, that seemed to be the the learning curve as well, having to circle back to students multiple times, be like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't use this one because X Y Z. Um, and so, have, having done it myself, it, it is informative as far as the sort of level at which you need to lay it out for them so they can do it successfully. Yeah. Anybody else really want to share? 
I will. I'm Patty Connors. Hi, Patty. Uh, um, I have done this a couple times too with my students, but this time I followed your directions exactly and I recorded it <clears throat> on my phone. And as she said, the setting, setting all those various things up was a little <clears throat> tricky. But um, what I was going to say is I was surprised it took a really long time to, to upload or download or whatever you call it for, for the recording to actually go. Um, so I didn't know if that was true of everybody else when they used their phone. I was just very surprised by that. Sure, yeah. No, that, that and the internet quality is one of the things that's really gonna affect our, our ability to deliver instruction and to have a, a fun experience with our choir members, all that sort of stuff. It's gonna, it's gonna be a big variable that we have to overcome. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just say that for myself, one of the things that I think the most about is the experience for the singers. Um, and I know that it is not super fun to put on headphones and sing along to MIDI. Uh, it's just not a choir. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing really reinforcing about that. Many of us are in choir because we don't want to be soloists. We're in choir because we like to sing with other people. And so listening to your own voice is also not always super pleasant, especially those of us who are, as we get older, find that we can't do the things that we could do 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and I'm certainly in that camp. Uh, so it's, it's frustrating sometimes. And, and so the experience for the singer is very important to me. And for that purpose, the, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the, how I use this in rehearsal. So the original synchronization of the tracks is, is the first place where you're like, oh, this sounds like a choir. And you, and you get that relatively quickly. That process for this piece actually took me about 15 minutes, even though there were you know, 20 or 22 tracks. So what, once you get kind of used to doing this and you have a couple rehearsals with your singers and you get them rolling on it, this is the kind of thing where you can get them to submit and you could do audio only, just use voice memos or something on their phone. Uh, so it's not, doesn't take as long to upload as Patty said, but then you can quickly get those audio files into a mix so that they can sit in Zoom, hear themselves singing and, and sing along. And then that's a much more pleasant experience for them than it is to sing along to MIDI. So if you haven't thought through that, that's, that's one of the things that I use these files for, not merely to, oh, look, here's a virtual choir, but, but also to enhance the rehearsal process itself. So I hope, that, I hope that makes sense to you and something you might be interested in doing if you're gonna be doing uh, a hybrid setting or a, a distance only setting this fall. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you was uh, these, these blue bonnets are not actually behind me. Uh, I was gonna show you my setup here in rehearsal. And so uh, Philip, can you highlight my other computer or spotlight it, whatever it's called? Do you see me down there waving? That's my computer. <laughs> I don't know if you can find it. There's only one million of us. <laughs> there we go. Hey, all right. Okay, so um, so this is my this this was to be. Let's see if it'll. Oh uh, no, I won't. Let, oh no, it did let me change. There we go. All right. Okay, so uh, this was to be spring tour. Oh, we get a cool infinite effect. Right, that's neat. Uh, so this was to be spring tour for my choir, but instead here's the here's the new iMac. Uh, and then I before I even ordered the iMac, I was like, oh well, I need a second screen, of course. Um, and so instead of, you know, just the iMac, now I have, I mean, this is like arms width. This is about four and a half feet of screen. Um, and then over here, I've got a thousand chords, uh, my iPad, my laptop, keyboard, and the ring light. Now, the important thing that I wanted to show you was during rehearsal, I've got that little ring light set up so that my phone is you know easy screen for my face because the singers do i've gotten a lot of feedback they want to see me they want to see me conduct they want to hear me talk and they want to see me when i'm talking uh so having the setup for your phone is really handy those things are about 35 bucks uh, so they're not expensive at all whatever computer you have you can probably set it up in some way shape or form so that it is overlooking your keyboard and then my keyboard is right underneath and i'm not actually running that through my computer i just have an amp um, and then all of this over here is, of course, optional, but it does help me to be able to go back to this setup for, um, for if I want to share screen. 
Um, so I wanted to sort of show you that setup. There are a, a million ways to do the rehearsal setup, just as there are um, to do a, a virtual choir. Um, but that's, that's my own setup. And then I'll just share a screen with you to show you. What I do from there is um, I will have pulled up the audio files so you can see them over here. I'll have pulled up the audio files that I'm going to use during the course of the rehearsal and I'll have uh, PDFs pulled up here. And so that's an easy way to have everything set up and ready to go. Uh, if I'm gonna conduct or play the piano, obviously that needs to be you know, camera on me and that, that will be uh, synchronized. So that, that's my setup. And then, uh, you know, with the, with the additional, uh, you know, you've got files here for our logic rehearsal. Um, you could take these and I could maybe make a stack out of them in logic, um, create a track stack, and that would enable me to highlight just the sopranos. So turn just the sopranos up. You can see that stack of tracks that that made there. Um, so if you can you can get really crazy with your setup, or you can just do keyboard and some sound files. Um, but that that's how I'm running my Tuesday night rehearsals. Um, but just in terms of the hardware setup, do you have any do you have any questions about that? I'll I'll pause there for a moment. Do you have any questions about how the the hardware is set up? Have you experimented? Have you got a different idea of what's working well for you? I hear somebody's tippity tapping. <laughs> okay, well, if you have a question, feel free to chip in or throw it into the chat. Um, the next thing I was going to tell you about was my past week at Tarleton with TESFA. We had what amounts to a, kind of a high school choir schedule. Um, it was a little bit short of that, about an hour and a half short, but in the morning, I had about 30 minutes with them. They got a little break. We had an hour with our small, what we call in Texas, our small school, quote unquote, students. We had an hour with them uh, for the Sopranos and the Altos. And then we had um, about an hour with the, um, the large school folks. So there's two and a half hours. They came back an hour after that, after they had had lunch, had an hour with TESFA. And then they had an hour after that of just sort of activity with what would have been our activities director. So this would have been volleyball or something, or something like that. And instead was with the activities director. So that's one, two, three, four, five hours, five and a half. Um, so actually it is about a high school day of class. Um, five and a half hours of activity with us during the day. It was the same kids, so that had to all be different, but I was there all day and running all of this through Zoom. So it is possible to, to do this kind of instruction through Zoom. There are some important considerations to talk about. I'm going to come back to the, the, uh, the questions in just a second. There are some important considerations to talk about for that day in terms of what we did. One of the things that we did was I got them making sound on Zoom. I think Philip has shown you some different techniques that you can use, and I think some of you probably have some really creative ideas. But for myself, what I did was I said, okay, it's awkward to be sitting in silence because by this point I've been running a Tuesday night rehearsal for eight weeks and I already experienced this. It's awkward to sit and stare at each other in silence. Let's all unmute and we're gonna make some noises. So we're gonna sigh and yawn and we would do pentatonic solfege, you know, soul me, soul me, and it doesn't matter you know, how it comes back to you. We tried to do some of the, let's sustain some chords. I have to say that's pretty unsatisfying in Zoom. I did not really find that to be a pleasant sound, but, but, but it's a nice thing to kind of get them making some noise because they're self-conscious about their siblings or their parents or even their pets. And so that, you know, making sound in their room is awkward for them. Getting them doing something is really helpful. And then the next thing we did, or we encouraged them to do by about Wednesday, was we encouraged them to wear headphones. Because while it is cool to sort of sit outside with your phone or sit outside with your computer and not have to worry about anything except just watching, that's for watching. But this is not TV. This is supposed to be, you know, choir. And so if they have headphones on, they, they hear me very clearly in their ears. They hear the piano. And so it feels much more immersive. They feel safer to make some sound. I mean, I, you probably had the experience of singing along to something on your headphones without realizing somebody's in the room and you turn around and you're embarrassed. You know, <laughs> having, having those headphones on is a little bit of buffer between them and the outside world and helps relieve some of that anxiety. So wearing the headphones, I think, is really helpful. Trying to get the students to turn their camera on 
Many of them are very self-conscious about their appearance. They're self-conscious about their house. They don't want to show people the inside of their bedroom or whatever it is. Um, and so that self-consciousness is understandable, but if they're comfortable encouraging them to turn on to turn on that camera helps them to connect with one another. And then if you in turn can encourage a really positive environment where you know, you're know you greeting people and maybe giving them a compliment of some kind, just like you would do outside of your room uh, is, is I think really helpful to get them to again, feel connected with each other. Tesfa did a couple additional things that I really liked. One was he spent some time saying, all right, everybody, everybody's camera is on who's willing to do it. Now let's take a minute. I'm going to play some music for you that we're rehearsing. I want you to just make eye contact with people. We're going to spend about a minute and a half, two minutes making eye contact with each other and listening to this song that we're rehearsing. Think through this song together. Think through this piece of music. What does it mean to you? And then he would ask some, uh, some pointed questions about it. Um, and then in addition uh, to all that stuff I was doing, and I'm going to share screen again, and I'll just show you some of the stuff that we were up to. Um, we were doing history. Th Whoa, what is this? Oh, this is the full screen YouTube. We'll get out of that. Uh, on my Tarleton Choir, I've got a shared folder, and I have all of their material for warm-ups. And so some of it is indeed warm-ups, uh, but some of it we're doing, <laughs> this, was, this was the end of rehearsal on uh, last Tuesday night. So we had a little uh, Neil Diamond there at the end, a little sing along. Um, and we've been doing uh, the first couple of these we've done for the last several weeks, we're doing some enrichment toward the end. Uh, and this is my community group, by the way, of some world music stuff. And so this, these, I've shared these presentations with them and it includes all kinds of links to videos that they can watch. Uh, I included some Spotify playlists. And so this is not more than five or seven minutes, but they really enjoyed it. A lot of them said to me, oh my gosh, it was so cool to learn about, you know, Samba Salsa. I had no idea about these um, genres of music and now I have something to listen to during the week. So enrichment activity to, to sort of pull out from just, hey, let's rehearse a piece and make a virtual choir. Um, so lots of additional uh, elements in the rehearsal process. Anybody have any, any questions or additional thoughts to share about that as I try to stop sharing with you? There we go. And I'll get to the chat after I give you a second to ask questions. This is Patty Connors again. I'll keep speaking up. Um, go ahead. Um, so could we together try what you were just talking about in terms of actually making sounds together on Zoom? Absolutely. Um, because I, it needs to be sort of an aleatoric thing because like, you know, you can't really sing a song in together. But so could we try some of that and see how that actually feels? Yeah, let's do that. We'll do that in just one second. So let's let's go through uh, real quickly the, the chat. <clears throat> um, so you can airdrop from your phone to your computer if you're a Mac person, and that's uh, that's a little bit usually a little bit easier to upload because you can leave your computer and leaving it uploading. Uh, let's see, uploaded my YouTube channel to download from there, but it's not. Uh, YouTube and Google are connected, so that could be why you had better luck if you uploaded to your YouTube channel. Um, and then uh, Peter asks, original sound, how to keep your audio from cutting out. Da, 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 da. Uh, Peter, I'm not sure if I'm following you. How to keep your audio from cutting in and out from singers if you're singing live in a section. Peter, can you elaborate on your question? I'm not sure I follow. Like a lot of times Zoom will compress the, the audio. And so then uh -huh. it kind of like you disappear for periods of time I've found with my students. And so, or, or my students disappear from me. Um, uh -huh. And so like there's just because of the compression of the file for sustained sounds. Do you, how much, I guess the bigger question is how much do you sing live for them in sections versus how much do you use the practice tracks? And have you had any issue with, with having to decompress the files or, or decompress your audio in that sense? Gotcha. Okay, so, so anything we're doing in our live Tuesday night rehearsal, I'm doing with either live audio from my amp or pre-recorded audio on my computer. And so we're not using any of our um, rehearsal track, like we're not trying to synchronize our rehearsal tracks or anything like that on their own sound. They do have a shared folder with all of the rehearsal tracks they could possibly need, but we're not using any of that during our synchronous instruction. Um, and my experience has been that in general, um, it's, it's, it works pretty well. 
Um, Tesfa says clean feed is a great tool. I don't know if you can elaborate on that Tesfa. I'm assuming that's a, is that a browser based app? Can y'all hear me? Yes. You can. Okay. Yeah. Basically clean feed is a, a, a tool that you can use where it cleans the audio pretty well. It's like shockingly well using zoom. And, um, you know, we've tested it with people using Wi-Fi. We've tested the people using the Ethernet connection. I will tell you, though, if your student has a, a budget uh, broadband connection and, they're, and they have multiple people using it at the same time, if you have students go to speedtest.net and they're testing their speed and they're getting seven megabits down, it doesn't matter what online video, uh, you know, platform you use, the compression is going to be extreme because their job is to try to keep it as smooth as possible for as many users as possible. But if you want to try to fix the sound, I would recommend using clean feed if the quality of their internet connection is solid. It's super intuitive. You know, it gets rid of the, uh, you, you don't have any fuzzy quality or crackle and stuff like that. Because what Zoom has to do is that they, they compress the sound. Like you can probably see in some of your Zoom settings, you'll see where it says, uh, um, uh, noise cancellation or echo cancellation. All of that stuff is basically uh, artificial. And when they do that, and when you try to sing and there's a piano in the background, there's too much information being processed through the software at the same time. So what they have to do is try to cut it and compress it. So if you go to original audio and you're still having a problem, that's when I would recommend original sound. That's what I would recommend going to clean feed. Awesome, thank you, Tesfa. Um, and then, of course, Philip has um, there are some tips for how to uh, turn off your um, your uh, background suppressed background noise function because if you're going to play your piano things like that, uh, Zoom will be confused about what to uh, what to focus on. Peter had a question about clean feed there. Test file, if you can see it. Um, Susan asked about Google Meets. I have not used Google Meet, Susan, um, so I'm not sure about that. Um, Tesla says web-based Chrome, Peter. All right, so uh, the next thing we'll do then, we're gonna, we are gonna go, uh, so I have to leave again today uh, at 11, your time, because I'm gonna go teach about audio mixing and mastering uh, at 11 o'clock via Coremore. Um, but a couple of you had requested some, some more information on that process, so I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, we also will have a video editing class tomorrow with Laura Sam in the afternoon. So both those things are available this week. You can just shoot me an email if you'd like to be a part of that. We'll do this again next week and the week after. And by that point, my heart's desire is that we will have archived versions of these trainings up and ready to go so that uh, we are no longer doing uh, weekly trainings as we all try to start doing our real jobs. So you'll have you'll have hopefully some archived versions of these to, to get you the training if you haven't been able to make any of them so far. The uh, the slideshow that I used last week is available on coremore.com that will take you step by step through the process. And uh, so that's that's there now. And you can go look at that anytime. And it's, it's a pretty decent uh, sort of way to get to get into the process. Um, We've also, I should add, since last week, we've also added Raul Dominguez, who's one of our advisors. He's a graduate student in Colorado. He compiled like a 12-page document full of free resources that's on coremore.com. We're hosting it there, and uh, it, is, it is really incredible. It's, it's a great, great uh, document for you. If you're looking for additional resources around the web, there's all kinds of stuff there. Um, I am not using a microphone. I believe Tesfa is. I'm also, you said mixing with piano. I'm also not doing anything with any kind of a soundboard or a mixer or anything like that. I'm just letting the chips fall where they may. <laughs> uh, I'm just kind of letting the sound take care of itself. Uh, for me, a lot of the process right now is not so much focused on audio quality as it is on just getting people to participate and to do the tasks that happen in between rehearsals and to hopefully enjoy themselves as well. Because uh, a lot of my community members, this is not their cup of tea. Uh, to be in Zoom in the first place. And many of them are frustrated with the, uh, the state we live in, <laughs> to say. And, uh, and they're, they're frustrated with lack of guidance and lack of leadership. I mean, they're, they're like all of us. They, they wanna know what are we, what is, what's going on? And I don't have any good answers for them. So uh, sometimes that comes out in, in the Zoom rehearsal. They, they feel like they're, they're not able to do exactly what they wanna do. All right. Uh, let's, I think that's all the questions in the chat. So let's go on and do some of what Patty had in mind. I can't unmute you. So I'll ask Philip, can you unmute everybody? And we'll, 
give this a shot. Just unmute yourselves, everybody, but I'm going to give it a shot here. You may have, some of you may have to do it yourself too. All right, so I'm going to share a computer sound with you as well. Uh, we may get some echo and that's okay. Um, the other thing I did with everybody yesterday is I did some warm up. So we'll do those in a minute as well. For right now, everybody would please just give me a nice high sigh. Sing, soul me, soul me, soul me, soul me, me, do, 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 me, me, and you get the idea so you can see how i think philip i mean i saw philip talk about this weeks and weeks ago so i assume he's used some of this in, in these sessions with you guys uh and philip was was one of the ones who gave me the idea to do that i think the additional thing that i figured out from doing tuesday nights philip you can meet her right now because i'm gonna show them another technique um the uh or you can meet yourselves the other uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what's what's hilarious is when when you're doing that to yourself, which I do, which I do frequently. So anyway, uh, the uh, the thing that uh, I, I realized after seeing Philip demonstrate those those methods, I think he talked about this, but it really started to connect with me after I've been running my rehearsals for a while. Is that being in Zoom in relative silence, except for the sound of your voice, is not great for you. And you can think of how much worse it is for your singers. They want to hear you sing, and they want to see your face, and they want to hear you talk. So you don't want to be shy as the teacher or the conductor. But at the same time, being able to hear, oh, Oh, there are other people here is really helpful. Uh, and then uh, just to reiterate, the virtual choir work that you did last week, if this were my weekly rehearsal, we wouldn't have just listened to the video and be like, oh, hooray us, that's, that's not the point. We would have sung along to that track or maybe even that video, although I think it's good just to sing in Zoom. And having on headphones and hearing your friends' ears, or so your friends' uh, voices in your ears, is powerful even if it's not live. And then you get a little more rehearsal. You can solicit for their feedback. So you can say, for example, did you hear that mixed vowel tenors that was not supposed to be there? Uh, or you can you know, talk about the, the cutoff that wasn't clean or whatever it is. So uh, that's the other purpose of having that there. Now, the next thing I wanted to play for you real quickly is, I think I'm sharing sound. Um, Philip told me we did not do this. I hope that's, I hope that's true, I've, I've actually forgotten. This is a round that I mixed down for my singers, and you can, if you do this, you can use it as a warm up. You're welcome, Patty. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, you can use it as a warm up, but you can also record during rehearsal. So if I were going to record during rehearsal, I would say, okay, everybody get out your second device, and we're going to push record now. Got sound? Uh, so, so you sing along with that. That's, that's obviously, that's me. It sounds a little creepy, uh, but that's me. Uh, and then hopefully you would move very quickly past that to having their voices involved. 
Um, and then something we did with TESFA this past week that was really fun was, or I thought was really fun, was that we had um, a, a track, a backing track for a, a set of music that is is around and is very repetitive just has the same chords over and over again so you can kind of play around with it as the rehearsal is going on and so sing with me i'll start the, i'll start the track going here's the first part Ooh. Ooh. then it goes up to do Ooh. then it goes up to me Back to me again. Ooh. Now let's repeat back to soul. that text the the point though is that because it's very very simple because it's repeated uh, and because it's around you could you could now record that during rehearsal mix it down and uh, and now we're, we're suddenly in harmony the next time we see each other so I've taught it in 30 seconds a minute they can record it during rehearsal they don't have to go anywhere else record it during rehearsal now we have harmony we have a chorus and the way that I've constructed that piece, we have the harmony. And so guess what? That's for during a verse. So the ooh is for, well, I woke up this morning. So we've got a soloist who's going to sing with us on Friday. The students all submitted their solos on their own time, not during rehearsal. And then we also have the chorus, the I will be the change I want to see in the world. So just think about it. We got verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We can do some ostinati and some improv improvising at the end and suddenly we actually have a full song structure that takes literally minutes of rehearsal time to put together because we want some early success, some social stuff to do, something that's kind of fun uh, and then we can do Ave Verum Corpus later once they get used to the process and they start to really uh, buy into the process. So that was another of the techniques that we used this week that I think is hopefully going to be really successful. We've got students submitting. I think we have on that one, by the way, Tesla, on that one, we've got more submissions than anything else. So I think we have 25 or 30 submissions so far on that one. Uh, Nicole, let's see. Is there a way to make recordings if students only have one device? So the thing that we told students was if they're on their laptop, you can make a recording sort of on your own time. It takes a little finagling to do on just one device because they, they can, you know, they can pull up their music and they can pull up the, the recording on YouTube, push play, and they can record all on the same device. Most of the, many of them have like a gaming headphone with a mic that they can just use to plug in their computer. So if they have a laptop or a tower, they can do it that way. Um, if they are on their uh, phone, that's challenging. They're gonna have to probably borrow a sister, brother, father, mother, tablet or a phone Many of them do have a tablet, so they can watch you and listen on their tablet, and then they can record on their phone. So many of them have that. Tablets these days are super cheap. So that's, that's for many of them, easy enough. Uh, but they can also just borrow. And that's where the asynchronous can really be helpful for the process, because if they don't have the devices that they need, they can, they can borrow from a sibling and upload that way. Um, and then Nicole asks, do you typically work on a song and make a virtual choir and move on to a new one? Uh, so Nicole, <laughs> this summer I've been just sort of piloting different techniques with that group. So we have been going kind of song by song. We have a big project that we're pulling together here at the end of July. We're singing Andre Thomas's I Dream a World actually with the choir in California. So we're combining our efforts. Um, and so we're going one song at a time. I picture in the fall, uh, doing kind of what you suggest and actually doing what I'm going to do tomorrow night, which is to have everything mixed into one concert experience with kind of some fun, you know, fun stuff in between for the students, like little breaks, things like that, uh, with maybe some silly stuff from them or from me, you know, you can you should let your imagination go wild with that. Actually, I'll show you in just a minute some of the stuff that we did uh, this week with TESFA. Um, but, um, you know, that, that could be weaved into a concert in the fall. And then also the things that are in the public domain that you don't, that you don't have to worry about, you know, only, only streaming, you can leave up on your YouTube channel. 
and then have I ever had singers? So I have not yet had uh, students and singers in on the process, but that would a help you in terms of you know, you having a little bit less work to do, but also help with buy-in. Stephen Hankel, who's a friend of ours, uh, he had his students do the entire process for the, the video they did this spring. I know that when I was, um, you know, junior, senior in high school or in college, I would have loved to do this stuff. Um, so you may have some gifted students <clears throat> who would be interested in helping with all this kind of thing. It's gonna take careful planning on your part, but you might have some singers who could uh, buy into that part of the process. Uh, I'm gonna show you, let's see. Oh, it's answering. Okay, so I'm going to share you. I'm going to share with you now a couple of the other things we did during the week um, to kind of keep them bought in. So let's see. We did <clears throat> like a, a video every night for the camp. So here we go. I'll just show you real quickly. It's only a minute long. Good evening, campers. It was good to see you today. Uh, I'd like to give you a few quick announcements to help things go smoothly tomorrow. One is, if you could, change your name for me before you arrive at nine or once you do so that your first letter is whether you're large or small school. Second letter is your voice part, S, A, T, or B. And then your first name. So for me, large school, Tarleton, Tenor, and Troy, it would be L, T, Troy. Second thing is, uh, if you would, turn on your video so we can see your smiling face. We want to see you while we're singing together. It really helps us to feel connected. If you're not comfortable, that's fine, but we'd really love to see you. Last thing is, please make sure you see the link in the email for Dr. Asakura's voice students that's updated, so you'll need that for tomorrow and the next day. Otherwise, I think we're good to go. All the links are in the email that you need. See you soon. So that was pretty, you know, that was pretty businesslike. That was basically uh, what, what they needed for that next day. Um, and then this next movie I'll show you was a pretty, it was, I had a very, oh wait, this is not it. Oh, that's Sunday night. Let's go to, oh no, that says Tuesday. Oh, here it is, okay. Uh, so I had a pretty complicated set of announcements I needed to give to them. So that I'm not gonna play it for the whole thing for you, but I'll just show you. I sent them a PDF, I put it in an email. Good evening, campers. I hope you're doing well tonight. Had a great time with you today. Hope you enjoyed yourself. So you can see, I mean, this the whole darn PDF. It was in the body of the email. It was in the video. It was, I mean, it was attached to the email, giving them every which way it could possibly go. And then going through the whole thing, there were hyperlinks in it. I mean, just a thousand different ways for them to get the instructions. Uh, and then the thing that uh, we did at the end is Tesfa was super excited about the Dr. Pepper milkshake. So we had a little nice skit at the end. All right, Winton and I are now in the drive-through getting ready. Winton, say hello. Hi. Hey, can I get a uh, small Dr. Pepper shake and a large Dr. Pepper shake, please? I'm sorry, uh, we can only keep it a little shake right now. We're shaking the throat. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, can I get a large chocolate milkshake and a small chocolate milkshake, please? So, not a Dr. Pepper milkshake, but still good. Still good stuff. So, I spent a little bit of time assembling that, you know, kind of inside jokes from today's rehearsal. Here's Tesfa and Hey, y'all, what y'all doing? Hopefully, y'all are waking up, ready to record. Um, what am I doing right now? I am, uh, as you can tell, outside in my driveway in Northfield, Minnesota. And I have on my barbecue polo. And I am smoking a brisket. As you can see, you Texas people will appreciate this. It's a beautiful brisket that we got going. I'm going to open it up for you. Ooh, look at that beaut. Beautiful brisket there. <laughs> all right so you may you may feel like that's just sort of superfluous but to me this is all integral to making the students feel like they are participating with one another in your community 
Um, and the video editing that you're learning is not merely for creating a virtual choir. The video editing is for recruiting, retention, for making them feel engaged. And I mean, as you point out, having them do stuff is super important. So the other thing we're doing on Friday is we're gonna have a talent show where they're using Flipgrid to do whatever they want. They can show off their gardening, they can you know, juggle, they can whatever they want, burp the alphabet, they can do anything they wanna do. And uh, so that's gonna be after we do our virtual choir stuff for their parents. So we, we engage them in a wide variety of ways uh, to, try to, to try to get everything sort of engaging for the students. And I, I think we did, I think we succeeded. They seem to be really super into it. As they say now, the kids, they were vibing, um, so. It was, a, it was a good experience for them. So any, uh, any questions? I wanted to showcase all that process for you that we did this week because I feel like that's, that's the application of all of this audio and video editing, not the virtual choir. The virtual choir is awesome if you want to show your stakeholders, but I think the, the process and the community, that's, that's what really I, I think is, is really important. So. You've got a few things in the chat there, Troy, uh, about technology and troubleshooting. Oh yeah, actually, I'd forgotten I was going to show you <laughs> show you really quickly. <laughs> so, I got so excited about the process. So, uh, so the again, we offer trainings on this. We're going to have two more weeks of it. The the technology that I'm using, if you're a Mac user, Logic and Final Cut Pro are super cheap, two hundred dollars. So. Uh, for both. And I mean, that, that used to be five, 10 years ago, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of, of, worth of software. And nowadays it's much cheaper. Uh, those are both professional grade programs. If you use uh, Adobe or Pro Tools, those are uh, also sort of the analogs that are, that are PC friendly, but they're, they're much, much more expensive. Uh, and actually Adobe stuff tends to be a little heavier on your, on your computer. So uh, it's, not as, it's not as friendly to your, your CPU or your GPU. Um, so those are those are sort of the high end options. Mid grade options include things like Movavi, uh, M O V A V I, and um, I'm trying to think of Audacity, things like that. Uh, there's obviously there's a list of all this stuff that you can look at in the Coromore on the slideshow. It's toward the beginning. In our newsletter that goes out every week, we link to Kathleen Hansen's uh, document that she's got going, which includes all of these software options as well as pricing for them. So there are places to find all of these uh, all of these options. Um, let's see, let's do questions that you asked. Karen, I haven't done that, but that's a great idea just to do a survey of your ensemble. Uh, you, I could see putting together a Google form, sending out to your ensemble and saying, what do you have available? Um, instead of trying to, you know, t catch as catch can, just figure out what does everybody need. Um, let's see. Uh, I have not used Flipgrid, actually. Uh, that's our Activities Director Ruben is doing that. Uh, Philip, you want to say anything about Flipgrid? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Flipgrid. I've used it successfully with uh, high schoolers as well as adults. That's how I audition students for the singers of this age. Uh, super easy, as Sue said, for them to click a button and, and submit. And then for auditions with the adults this year, I created a template video of what to do, put all the instructions, uploaded all the PDFs, and then people send in videos that way. And it's easy to download them and then you can edit them in any way that you need to also. So I'm a big fan. It helps that I know the person who created the software, but I'm a big fan of Flipgrid. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little kickback. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I need to run out so I can go to my next training, but hopefully this has got your imagination going in terms of what's possible. Uh, and hopefully it also gives you a sense that learning these skills is not you know, just one application and that's it. So am I wasting time? Is this going to be a ton of investment in terms of both money and also training or, or for nothing? Or is it going to be something I can use? I think this is definitely something we can use in many different ways come fall, no matter what our uh, situation ends up being <laughs> and for right now. That's, that's a good thing because I think most of us are in uncertainty for the next, at least the next week or so. So thank you so much for having me as a guest. I really appreciate it, Philip. Thanks so much for inviting me. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, you can email me at troy at coramore.com, T-R-O-Y at C-H-O-R-A-M-O-R, coramore.com.